Assalamualaikum, selamat datang di Jembatan Dakwah dan kali ini ada sebuah video dari Muhammad Ali. Ya, um, Muhammad Ali kita tahu sendiri ya, <laughs> sangat luar biasa sekali. Dan ini kayaknya terjadi sebelum uh, bencana virus itu ya, <laughs> kita tahu sendiri kan. Nah di sini ada dua orang yang tiba-tiba datang kepada Muhammad Ali di mana mereka itu pengen tahu nih tentang sejatinya isi dari Alquran karena gimana ya? Um, Al-Quran itu adalah sumber hukum yang utama dalam Islam Dan mereka penasaran aja nih Kok bisa sih orang muslim kayak gitu Nah ini dia Kalian bakal tahu nih di situ Mereka sampai kaget-kaget Loh ternyata ada mujizat Yesus ya Yang di dalam Quran itu Kok aku nggak tahu sih Ya kurang lebih kayak gitu sih Nah langsung aja nih Kita tonton videonya Kita mulai Brothers, yeah. okay. So, what are you? Do you following Christianity or what religion? Do you yeah, yeah. Because you're wearing a cross, so I, I know it's straight away. You know, <laughs> I know people wear it just for the accessory, accessory, right? So, are you religious? Do you actually believe in Christianity? Go to the church, believe in the Bible. You do, yeah. Same. Try. Okay. Okay. Is it okay if I ask you? Because look, there's a lot of similarities between Islam and Christianity. Well, this is a, this is what I'm curious about. Mm. So, I'll tell you the similarities. Yeah. The Bible is. My daily thing. I read that all the time, but the Quran I've never read it, and so I, I wouldn't even know how to talk to you yet. Absolutely. And so I want to read it. Absolutely. To know how it's to a it's a very important thing, yeah, in, 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 for us to study different people's religion to understand where they're coming from, to understand their point of view, to understand them better, right? So I read the Bible, so I, so I can understand the Christians better, where they're coming from, etc., right? So there's a lot of communities between Islam and Christianity. The first is we believe in a lot of similar prophets. Abraham, Noah, Adam, Jesus, uh, Moses, we believe in similar prophets, right? Uh, the second thing is we believe in the virgin birth of Jesus. We believe Jesus was mir miraculously born. He didn't have a father. So Muslims believe, right? We believe he was a prophet of God. We believe he was the Messiah. We believe that Mary was a righteous woman, right? So we don't believe she was an evil woman like the, the Jews would say about her and she was adulterous and all of that, right? We don't believe in that. We believe she was a righteous woman, right? And we believe that uh, God sends revelations to different nations. So God sends revelations to to the Jews at a specific time. And God sends revelation, yeah, different times to different people, right? So that, so far, all of these are communalized between Muslims and Christians, right? The Quran speaks very highly of marriage. In chapter 19 is all about. It's called Maryam. It's about Mary, and the story is there, and the the, the birth of Jesus is there, and even some of, there are miracles in the Quran for Jesus that are not in the Bible. Like for example, we believe that Jesus spoke when he was in the cradle. Now, this is a miracle we believe, he literally spoke. But I'll tell you why this miracle makes so much sense. Do you know why this miracle makes so much sense? Because there was a law for the Jewish people. Adultery equals what? Punishment for death. Stoning to death. That was the law in the Old Testament, right? So, when Mary gave birth, she came with a child. How can she prove she's not an adulteress? When speaks, yeah, if Jesus himself spoke as a miracle and dignified his mother and showed that she is not, this is something that will protect his mother from being punished. But from a Christian point of view, how can I justify that Mary was not punished? How can you justify that? There is no logical explanation, right? Because they used to punish the people who commit adultery. There was no, uh, right? If you commit adultery, you're punished. So this miracle that is mentioned in the Quran, is not only something that gives more praise to Jesus, because there's a miracle, but it also makes a lot of rational sense to why his mother was not punished or no one did anything to her, right? Now, there are differences as well. So now we talk about similarities, we talk about the differences. Christianity, do you believe in the Trinity? Yes, believe in the Trinity, you as well, right? So this that's the difference between Islam, Muslims and Christians. Muslims say the Trinity is a concept that is not in the Bible. 
And we say that the Trinity came later on, 400 years after Jesus. We say if you go to the Old Testament and you look at the prophets and messengers, none of them preached Trinity. Abraham did not preach Trinity, Noah did not preach Trinity, Solomon did not preach, David did not. None of the prophets in the Old Testament preached Trinity, right? That's what Muslims would say. So we say, that's why we would disagree with it. We say God is just one. We don't say God is three in one or four in one. Another disagreement is that we say that Jesus, we don't believe someone dies for anyone's sins. We don't believe Jesus died, or he didn't die at all, and we don't believe he died for anyone's sin. That's a Muslim belief, right? So we say is... Sorry, clarify that. I'll clarify. You don't believe, you don't believe he died at all. We don't believe he died. We believe God took him up, right? Okay. So you believe in the end there was ascension. Yeah, you believe the ascension as well. We believe in the ascension, but we don't believe there's a death before the ascension. It's a difference, right? Because we believe if you are a messenger of God, you and God, God protects you. By the way, the Bible says the same. If you read the Psalms, Psalms chapter 91, it's a song about Jesus. Matthew quotes it and it says it's about Jesus. In that, uh, in that song, it says that God will protect Jesus. He will not be bruised. He will not bleed. No bad, no evil will happen to him. God will send angels to protect him. So we believe. We believe God protected Jesus. God will not allow his messenger to be stripped naked on a cross and be punished. We don't believe in that. And we definitely would not believe that will happen for you and me because that's not just... If you do evil, why is Jesus punished for why? He does evil, that's not just, I'm the one who did evil, I should be accountable. Of course it's not just. So if I go... Okay, let me, let me explain this part what you said, and, and you tell me what you think, right? If I go and do some evil thing over there, you know, whatever evil thing, right? Police comes and they take you. And they want to uh, uh, they punish you for the crime I did, right? And you say, no, I don't want to be punished. And I say to you, that's grace, my brother. You should be punished for what I did. What would you say? Yeah, well, that's different because I... Tell me I, what's the difference. Because I didn't choose. If I chose to step in with you, that's good. Excellent. So did Jesus want to die on the cross? I believe so. So when he said in Matthew 26, he prayed the whole night crying, said, yes. Father, take, take this, this cup away from me. Yeah. And then when he didn't want to die, he was crying, he was begging. But if, if he was God, he couldn't stop there anyway. No, no, but we still have to prove that he's God, right? But that's a different topic, right? Sure. Because because the Bible is not clear that he is God. But Jesus never claims that I am God in the Bible, right? But I'm saying, regardless whether he was God or not, he didn't want it. And if he didn't want it, then it's not just for him, for you to put the punishment of someone else on him. That's the argument I was making. It has nothing to do with him being God or not. Do you agree with me? That's not, it's not just for them to punish you for what I did. I say, okay, it's grace. He should be punished because of me. They would say to you, no, 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 my friend. You know, that doesn't work. It's a law. You made the crime. You're the one who will be punished for the crime. That's what the people would say to me, right? Yeah. So that's why the Bible says the same thing, by the way. If you read Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 19 to 20, it says the one who sinned shall die. So the punishment is for the one who commits the sin. And then it says the father shall not, yeah, it says the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, and the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. The righteousness of the right will be accounted to him, and the evilness of the evil person will be accounted to him. Which means this verse goes against this idea that you put the sins of someone on someone else. Because you did the wrong, according to the Bible, you should be accountable for it. That's why Muslims say that's something that was added later on. You want to say something? Yeah? Uh, I think, I don't know the Bible that well, but I'm sure there's verses. And it's talking about the old laws. It says like, we live. That's what Paul says. Yes, that Paul says that. But let me ask you this question. Who gave Paul authority to do anything? Paul came 100 years after Jesus. Do you know that? Paul, Paul, never... I have, I have issues with Paul myself. Good, excellent. So, yeah. By the way, the disciples had, had issues with Paul. I know, I know In Acts chapter 17 and 21, they would be arguing with him. Yeah. didn't meet them for 14 years. Why? I'll tell you, he lied to them. Straight to their face. Because what he just said... Sorry? No. We don't have anything that says Paul is a prophet at all. <laughs> we have an issue with Paul, you know? Because he changed everything. He's the one. I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, because who is he to come on? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, can I tell you what he did? According to, he said, I was going my road to Damascus. Imagine, I was going to my road to Tesco. And Jesus appeared to me. He said, Jesus appeared to him. And then he said, oh, Joe, uh, oh, Paul, do this and this and that. And he says, that's, that's the evidence. But anyone can do that. Anyone can say, I'm walking on my way. I saw Jesus. And he says, it's okay to do this now. And it's okay not to do that now, right? It's not evidence. That's why we have an issue with Paul. Especially that I said to you, it's clear in the Bible that he lied. Yeah. You said the law, you don't need to follow the law anymore. 
Paul was going to the Jews and he was saying to the Jews, you do not need to follow the law anymore. Yes, actually, Jesus says, Excellent. So Matthew, what he just quoted, is, is the most important thing, which is in Matthew. Right? This is the, this is the, the, the this hits the, the, everything on the list. Jesus says, I did not come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have come to fulfill. Fulfill it, yeah. Then he says, not a single drop, not a single tittle will be dropped of the law. If you, uh, uh, if you break a single drop of the law, you will not enter it. You'll be, you shall be called the, the, uh, the least in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, if you break the single little bit of the law, you shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And then he says, unless your righteousness exceeds that the righteous, Pharisees. yeah, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So he is there making a very clear point, right? That you need to follow the law. In Matthew. He's making a, a clear claim there. Yes. You need to follow the law. But I don't think Jesus believed that the Pharisees were righteous. Yeah. He didn't. Absolutely. He says, I agree with you. Whitewashed tombs. You're a you know of why? Vipers. You know why? None of you are actually Absolutely. righteous as you. They, they had a problem, right? They had the works, they didn't have the faith. Correct belief, the correct action, the correct morals, they didn't have. They had the works only. So the works did not save them. So Jesus' point is, you cannot only be like the Pharisees, you have to exceed the Pharisees. Not just the works, you have to have the faith as well. Right? And something we agree with. That's why James said, faith without work is dead. Yeah. Right? Because it's Give making... Yes, works. absolutely, right? So he's yeah. making a claim you need both. Both of them ha have to go hand in hand. And this is the Islamic teaching. Yeah, yeah. This is the Islamic teaching that both of them can go together. But let me ask you this, right? Because this idea of the Trinity and this idea of Jesus being God, where is it in the Bible? Well, where does it come from? Consider this. If you read um, Ecclesiastes, if you read uh, the Psalms, Proverbs, the mention of wisdom, how it's a being, it's a thing, it's a person. Okay. The wisdom of God is a, is personified. Okay. It's a thing. And so perhaps the Holy Spirit, Yeshua, these are facets of who Yahweh is, who Adonai is. But you it's, know, it's it's part of who he is. You know, he's he's not us. He's dimensional being. I agree with he you. created everything. Absolutely. He's, he's beyond what we can even comprehend sure. in terms of... So, I agree with you completely. There's two points there, right? First point I would say is that this, the, the Psalms are very uh, metaphorical, not literal, right? And there are many, ver like for example, some of the verses in the Psalms talks about the earth having four corners and being flat and all. Yeah, yeah. Right? But, and then Christians will all say this is metaphorical, right? Uh, not all, there's, you know, of course there's debates on those things, but sure. some people... Say, no, but you, even even the flat earthers would not say it has four uh, four pillars and yeah, four corners, right? Risk, right? Yeah, 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 even they wouldn't agree with that, right? So I'm saying that there are things there that people have to say is metaphorical. Right? So I would say the reference to wisdom there, I would personally say it's it's metaphorical. But there is a the second point I want to make is this: is in order I completely agree with you. God is beyond human comprehension in essence. We can't completely understand God, right? In his essence. But my claim is first, where did he claim his eternity? If he did claim, then I say, okay, it makes sense. God he is, he said he's a trinity. We cannot fully understand it. But he has to first make a claim that he is a trinity. You understand yeah, what I'm not saying? A claim in, in black and white, but when when he makes hmm. humanity, we can we can we can look at the verses. Give me yeah, like what you think. Right? Tell me, tell me. Uh, he says, from let, let, us make, let us make man in our image. Yes, that's Genesis it's one twenty one. Yes, yeah, one twenty one. It's a plural yes. thing. Yes. Can I tell you why that was? Yeah, but that wouldn't lead to. to, to I'm not to, saying it's a yes. it's a clear laying out. Of this. Yes. It's, it's I'll, I'll explain the idea with that. It's I'll explain. more than one. Huh? Yeah, 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 it's okay. Yeah. So I actually carry my Bible everywhere. No, 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 I, it's okay. You can tell me the verses. I'll probably get the verses. No problem. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So, so Genesis one twenty one. You want to say something? Uh, uh, I was just gonna say I don't know if that's right, but God says. Sorry, Jesus says God sent me, right? Yes, yes, He does. He does in John seventeen three, for example. There are many verses. Yes. When he's dying or going, does He say, "I'll leave you the Holy Spirit"? Uh, he says he's forsaking God, forsaking him. No, no, no. He's saying after, after when he leaves, he says, "It is good that I leave, 
because then I will, I will provide somebody better. I will provide, I will, I will uh, send someone else. Yeah, John it's 14 and 16, John. Yeah, he doesn't say the Holy Spirit. I'll come to that. No, he says, says, yes. he, he says, says a paracletus in Hebrew, in, in Greek, uh, yeah. which means the helper or the comfort. Yeah, By the way, the I'll tell you why, why I don't, I'm, I'm making a very point. That this is not the Holy Spirit, I'll tell you why. I'm making a claim it's not the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but before that, coming back to the, the, the verse, before we come to this topic, well, I wanted to say something else before coming to that. It was a point that I was making before that. Yeah, that God himself claiming that he is he is a trinity or not claiming that he's a trinity. That he's an us. Yes, yeah, he's an us, yes. You, you quoted the, uh, Genesis. Yeah. I'll deal, we'll deal with Genesis and then we'll come to the, the second point, right? So Genesis' point, Genesis' point, Hebrew has something called majestic pruder. Even English has it. Something in English called the royal we. So the queen speaks in pruder, but the queen is one person. So it's a majestic way of speaking. This exists in, in the Semitic languages like Hebrew, Arabic, and Arabic. And, and, and in Arabic, the Quran uses the term us, like we created the heavens. But no Muslim on earth believes that God is persons or more than one, it's just one. So this is a linguistic way, but it does not entail more than one. Why? Because Deuteronomy 6 4 says, Shammai Israel, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad, Hero Israel, Allah God is one God. Right? And if you look at Genesis, the beginning of Genesis, it says, Barashit bara Elohim, Tashamayim Vertaris Haaretz, which means Barashit in the beginning, bara Elohim. Elohim is actually can be plural or singular, but the verb bara, the verb bara shows that it's singular. So this is a linguistic thing, right? So uh, it, the, uh, Genesis 121 or Genesis 1, none of these verses show more than one. They all show one. That's why no Jewish person believes that God is more than one. None of them believe in plurality. They all believe God is just one entity, right? Now the second thing about the Paracletus, the helper in John 16 and 14 is mentioned in two places, right? Why am I saying John 16, the Paracletus death is not the Holy Spirit? Because there's claims there. You believe the Holy Spirit or most of Christians believe the Holy Spirit is fully God, right? Part of the Trinity, a person of yeah, God, yeah. right? So does the Holy Spirit need permission to speak? Does God need permission to speak? No. So the, the person that is going to come according to the verse, it says he will not speak of his own. He, does not, he needs permission to speak. He cannot speak of his own. That's the first thing. Yeah. Permission. So it says uh, he will not speak of his own. He shall glorify me. Go to John chapter 16, verse 7, I believe. 7 and go, goes onwards. Let's read it in John 16. Because it's interesting, there's two points yeah, there. Yeah, I'm, I'm recalling it, I'm recalling it. You study the Bible like continuously. I focus more on the Quran. Yes, but it is in fact better for you. But I, but I do, but I do study the, the, the Bible as well. But I focus on the Quran. Yeah. Yes, we will not speak of his own. Yes. But we will tell you what is in this world. Yes. So that means he doesn't speak with his own authority. It means he needs to be told, right? But someone tells him something and he says it. So that so would... you think this is Muhammad? I'll tell you why. Huh. I'll come. It's good, you, you caught it already, but I'll tell you why. First, first, you know, it uses the word he so much there, seven or eight times. He, well, he, he, he. It's given a reference to a he there, right? Second thing it says, yeah, it says, when I go, he shall come. But do, do you agree with me the Holy Spirit was already there? Yes. In the baptism, the dove, all yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was already there. So, so this is not talking about the Holy Spirit because it says, when I go, he's, even I cast out devils with the Spirit of God, Jesus, right? The Spirit was always with Jesus, right? So Jesus is not talking about the Spirit because he said, when I go, it will come. He will come, actually. He, yeah? So why do we say this is referring, or or this is an interpretation, you can accept it or not, right? We say they can, this can be referring to the Prophet Muhammad Why? I've heard this before about other kind of Christian sects, yes. like guys who claim to be kind of but I'll, latest Christian mm, guys. So I, I've heard this. Do you know why I'm saying that? Muhammad. Do you know why? Because this verse uses the term the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. And Jesus said in John, first John, First John, he says, in chapter 3, I believe. First John, he says, test the spirits to know if they are from God, right? So he claims that prophets are spirits. And then he speaks about false prophets and true prophets. So he uses the term spirit, true spirit, and false prophet, uh, false spirit for the prophets. So I'm making a claim there. It says the spirit of truth. This terminology has been used in the Bible for prophets. So it would make there's sense. A there's, a, there's, a, there's a way to test. And, uh, what is it? 1 John. First, is John, so it's John chapter 3, I believe. Let's, let's go to chapter 3. Three or four. It's 4, 
four. It's in the beginning. It's in the beginning. If it's not this one, then go to four. First jump four. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, four, yeah. Uh, but th this is how you know it, yeah. Yeah, very well. Like if, if Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Yes. And <laughs> that was the Spirit of God. So Prophet Muhammad does acknowledge Jesus here, yeah, yeah. right? right? Yeah, yeah. So, so he fits the criteria like a glove, I would say, right? So we say that there is a very good indication for anyone who's looking for does the Bible talk about Prophet Muhammad or not? Because, because the people when they came to to, to John the Baptist in John chapter one verse twenty one, they said to him, "Are you the Messiah?" Yes. So they ask about three people. They said, are you the Messiah? He said, no. no. He said, are you Elijah? Elias, no. Elijah, the different yes, names, yeah, right? Yeah. But he said, are you that prophet? So they were looking for three people. The Messiah, who is Jesus. Elias, who is John the Baptist, according to a lot of Christians. And they were looking for that prophet. Who teach prophet? Yes. That prophet. This is the question we were saying, right? So Muslims say, look, they were waiting for a prophet. Uh, yes, yes, Messiah, Elijah. Yeah, the Messiah, Elijah, and a prophet. So three people they're asking for, right? Because they asked three separate questions, right? Some people say, oh, but the Messiah was a prophet. He would not have asked three separate questions there. They would just say the Messiah or the Elijah. He would not add the prophet. You get the point? So they were looking for three different, in the, they were looking for a prophet, Jesus, and John the Baptist, right? Could it have been Moses? And a reluctance to no, say, by someone to, say to come. His name. By someone to come in the future. Moses already came. But when um, they say of they say of Jesus is this Elijah, they say of him also when he's. Um, what do you mean? Even Moses himself said there would be a prophet that would come that is like unto, yeah, unto yeah, him yeah. in the throne in chapter so, um, 18, verse 18. So Moses doesn't help you. He's even yeah, giving yeah. more. I'm He's just, even talking about another prophet. Uh, <laughs> By the way, if you read the commentaries, the Christian commentaries, they will say the prophet they're referring to here is the prophet of 1818. This is what they say. Because Moses said there will come a prophet like unto me. And that was not Jesus because Jesus was not like Moses. Right? Uh, he did not fight wars, he did not get married, he did not migrate. These all the things that Prophet Muhammad did, right? He was not a, a leader over his people. All of these things that Prophet Muhammad did, that makes Prophet Muhammad exactly like Moses, right? So you see there is a very solid case there for the, uh, Prophet Muhammad being mentioned in the, in the Bible, right? Being indicated that he is going to come, right? But coming back to our main point, right? Which is our main difference, which is the idea of Jesus being God. I say if you sincerely read the Bible, without any biases, you will come to the conclusion Nah itu dia teman-teman uh, pentingnya orang-orang itu mencoba untuk me mengerti, mencoba untuk memahami dan coba untuk mempelajari agama Islam agar mereka tidak terframing oleh framing buruk yang dilakukan oleh media barat terhadap Islam. Karena kita tahu sendiri ya framing media barat terhadap Islam itu mengerikan sekali karena itu udah nggak masuk akal. Pokoknya kalau yang Islam yang melakukan kriminalitas itu Islam maka mereka melabeli sebagai teloris. Nah kalau yang melakukannya bukan Islam cuman kriminal biasa. Seringnya sih kayak gitu media barat dan pentingnya orang-orang uh, yang mereka tuh paham dan sadar. Oh ternyata Islam tuh kayak gitu tuh dengan cara membaca teks aslinya yaitu uh, Alquran. Tapi karena mereka tidak uh, tidak mengerti bahasa Arab. Ya akhirnya dikasih teks terjemahan Dan ketika mereka Mau untuk membaca mereka akan menemukan Sesuatu yang sebelumnya Mereka tidak pernah bayangkan Bahkan kata apa Pertanyaan-pertanyaan yang sering ada Dalam pikiran mereka itu Bisa saja terjawab Dengan ketika mereka Membaca Quran insya Allah Seperti itu dan begitulah video ini Dapat kami sampaikan kepada kalian semuanya Semoga bermanfaat Sampai jumpa pada video berikutnya Assalamualaikum